Unity Temple. It's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I'm grateful to be here with you this morning. Duke and Sandra are unable to be here, but they're sending their well wishes to you all. If this is your first time, I want to welcome you. I know it was quite the journey to get here, but we want you to hopefully find a place that you feel welcome. And if at the end of the service you'd like to join us, there's some coffee and beverages downstairs, and it's usually a great conversation. We will now begin our service with the temple chimes, the peace prayer, and the call to inspiration by Millie. If you'd recite this with me. On this day, we dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. We accept ourselves without harsh judgment and express appreciation for our individuality. We live without fear to meet the events of this day with confidence. We accept others without prejudice to experience a sense of unity with all people. We honor our earthly environment and recognize a oneness with all creation. In harmony with ourselves, our lives, other people, and all of nature. With a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. Thank you, God. Amen.
So good morning, once again. And traditionally when we start at the service, we say, welcome to Unity Temple on the plaza where diversity is praised and peace and harmony are the rewards. This morning I wanted to shift that a little bit to the beginning of my talk because there's a lot to be said in that statement as today we're talking about a hero's journey. And there's a lot of diversity in our paths to arrive where we're at. And through that diversity, harmony in your life is what you will find. But often it comes with a lot of trials. So what is a hero's journey? It's a common narrative archetype and a lot of stories, and it involves a hero going on an adventure, experiencing trials, learning lessons, having triumphs, and a newfound knowledge for life and its experiences. And this can be boiled down into three basic stages. So the first one is departure, and that's going on an adventure. That might be leaving home, and maybe the journey started when you were born. Because when you look back over your life, you can say, well, no one should go through what I went through as a child. Maybe your journey began way before you even realized you were even on a journey. The next stage is the initiation, and that's learning to navigate an unfamiliar world. And a baby goes through an adventure, and there's multiple adventures in our lives sometimes. Or maybe it's you're going off to college. Maybe it's the first time of becoming a grandparent. Maybe it's the first time that you have to take in a grandchild that you weren't expecting to raise, or a niece, or a nephew, or a friend's child. And these are all different initiations into a new journey. And then the third stage is the return, and that's returning transformed. So today is a special day. Today is a day that in a lot of Christian um, schools of thought, it's practiced and is Palm Sunday. Now, as we look at what Palm Sunday is, it was the day that was celebrated as when Jesus was riding into Nazareth. And he was accompanied by some companions, and up to that point in time, he'd experienced all sorts of trials and tribulations and experiences. And whether or not you believe in the divinity of Jesus of Nazareth, there's no denying the impact the life of this man has had on our lives and also in history. There's a quote by H.G. Wells I want to read to you. And he says, I am a historian. I am not a believer, but I must confess as a historian that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. Jesus Christ is easily at most, at easily the most dominant figure in history. And we'd all have to say that that's true. Now, we here at Unity look at all schools of thoughts equally, but today, since this is Palm Sunday, I really want to look into how he was on a hero's journey. And part of the story is whenever he was riding into Nazareth, he was on a mule. And in metaphysical teaching, the meaning behind a mule is peace. The Romans, also on a parade into the city, were on horses. And horses often are symbolic of war. So when we go back to those three main parts, the departure, Jesus departed his traditional life and decided he wanted to make a change. And he always stuck to his beliefs as he went on these adventures. So as he was going into town, he had a choice. He could have gone in there trying to be defensive in the experience trying to create conflict, such as the Romans who are trying to, in all their regalia, be this presence, this force, but Jesus goes in there calmly, and that it was his method of inciting change, and that would be that stage three, which is the initiation of, or not the initiation, but that is him returning transformed. And as he returned transformed, that began to shift the perspectives of people because the Jewish people in the town thought that he was just coming to bring peace, which he was, but then he arrives at the temple and challenges a lot of their belief systems, and that's when the story of Jesus turning over tables is there. And then these people who were supportive of him initially now believe that he might actually turn the guards that are in town against him, against them. So Jesus was always shifting perspectives, but his, his ultimate message was always geared around peace. And as he was riding into town, they were waving palm leaves, and palm leaves are symbolic for triumph. 
Now, I really want to tie this into our own story, which is we've all had triumphs in different ways. Jesus, when he, he, he was born a hero, you are all born heroes because your story is unique. The only reason we're using Jesus right now is because your book is still yet to be written. Otherwise, I might be up here reading your particular story. And that's extremely important because later on, there will be someone who's reading your story. And that makes a huge effect on their lives. And you might not see it right now. Did he experience suffering? When you look at your own lives, have you experienced some form of suffering? The next question is, did you find the lesson in it? Because in any battle that you've been through, any experience that you've had, whether you title it a challenge or an opportunity, there's a lesson to be learned there. And did you find that? He was on a mission to shift consciousness. So now that you've gone on your journey and you're, you may be early on, you may be later on, or maybe you're going into a new journey right now that no one knows about. Are you going to allow it to transform you, or will you be defined by that? Because you can either define it or be defined by it, and that's always a cheap choice. Jesus was always trying to empower people to define their journeys, to define their own experiences. And Jesus, as we know, transforms society. I want to tell you about a story, and this story you might be familiar with. It's a young boy. And he goes through an experience of great fear and tragedy. He's not really sure how to handle this, what to do about it. And so he runs away. And as he's running far away from the challenges that he's just experienced, this fear, he comes across a couple of friends. And these friends are very carefree, very relaxed. They kind of have a Hakuna Matata lifestyle, if you're familiar with that. And if you're not, you should be, because it's important to the story. And then he has a friend who comes along. It was actually a girlfriend of sorts, and she reminds him of what he left behind. And as we're going along in our own journeys, we might be fearful of certain things and coming to a turning point of what, what, what decision do I make right now? Do I go back to that? Because that's really uncomfortable. Or do I stay here in this carefree lifestyle? And then a guru shows up, the wise sage. And some of you will understand this wise sage. And there's a, there's a clip that I want Cassie to play for you. And then we're going to recap what really happens with the sage. Mm. And if that doesn't move you, you got to check yourself for a pulse. That scene alone, especially when Rafiki is there and he hits him over the head and he says, Ow, that hurt. Well, yeah, it's in the past. Well, the past can still hurt. Like, what a great lesson to teach ourselves, our children, as we look at life and we say, I don't know, my life was really rough. Yeah, exactly. But you can either run from it or learn from it. So that, that would be enough of a message in itself in those few seconds. Now, looking at your own journey, I want you to always remember that you were born a hero. Your story will not fit anyone else's because there's not a book written out there that contains your story. And grow confidence in that because it's exactly as it should be. Now, you might be faced with something that no one else is going through. Great. Nothing happens until the first time it happens. Are you going to glean something from it? Are you going to be able to get a lesson from it that you could potentially transform someone else's experience if that's important to you? Or maybe it's just one single person. There's an expression that says, to the world they may be only one, but to one they may be the world. You never know who that one is, that you're the world too. You may be the only person that this person sees in their experience that can give them the gift of insight so that they in their own journeys now can perceive things a little bit differently. To be able to grab the tools so that their story completely changes because it may have been completely, in their perception, really negative very hurtful, but because of one idea that you share, they can now learn from their past and go make change. They can go address everything else in life a little bit differently. You've experienced trials, and that goes back to what did you take from those trials? It may have been the worst situation. You know, uh, security in life, as we look in, we, we send out our hearts 
to all those who were devastated recently by these tornadoes in multiple states. And when we're building up security in our mind of, well, my life is very secure, I enjoy how it is, we never know when that will be stripped away. Hopefully, you have gleaned enough information and wisdom from your experience up till now that it helps you deal with those situations when they do come because they may come or they may come to someone that you love and care about very dearly and you don't want to see them struggling and suffering so you might be the hard-headed lion or you might be the monkey in the story and either place is fine and if you're in that Timon and Pumbaa stage ain't nothing wrong with that because Hakuna Matata is a great philosophy to live by every day you have that gift of sharing your consciousness and impacting others as Jesus made a huge impact on the world and I'm not much of a scripture kind of guy I don't really read the Bible as uh, as a hobby of mine Duke messaged me last night at 10 o'clock and said that he may not be able to make it today so I'm like Palm Sunday if I had a pop quiz 24 hours ago I probably couldn't have told you anything about it so all last night I'm like what is Palm Sunday okay so that's where I'm at in my journey (laughs) but Lion King I'm very very familiar with (laughs) There was a gentleman named Joseph Campbell, um, and he had an expression, a quote, that says, The hero is that indescribable part of us that remains constant, courageous, regardless of what is happening around us. It is our authentic self, the essence of who we are, apart from our personality traits or the drama that sometimes surrounds us. Going back to the Lion King scene, when you're thinking about it, some people, and your story is unique. The way you, you translate something and apply it to your own story, that is perfect however you do it. When you're looking at Mufasa, you could be like, well, that's James Earl Jones. I wish I had a father with that voice. Well, yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe you look at it and you say, well, that, that's the image of God or source. In unity, we don't really say he or she or God is source. God is energy. God is the title. But whatever that is, that's that higher power up there in the sky reminding us of who we are. Not based off of circumstances, because sometimes labels get placed on people, and that becomes their reality. But deep down beyond all the layers of the question of who are you, because someone might say, I'm a teacher, I'm a mother, I'm a minister, I'm a fighter. Beyond all of that is the truth of who you are. And it's there waiting for you to discover it. You may look at yourself in the mirror and say, well, I'm, I'm not seeing that in me. Through everything that I've went through recently, I don't deserve any of this. That's not truly who you are. That's the story that you're telling yourself. But what do you need to ask yourself to discover who you truly are? What do you see when you look at yourself in the mirror? Do you see who you hope to be? Do you see the circumstances around you? Are you willing to question what it is that you're saying for the truth? And no one can define your truth except for you. Often you'll hear me say the teachers are waiting, and the teachers could be a Disney movie. Lion King is one of the many examples. You can glean a lot from that movie. Another sword in the stone, the scene when the boy is a little fish, and it's all about what are you focused on. These are all incredible, and if you've not seen Sword in the Stone, I'd highly recommend you watch that. Do you see your inner hero? Are you seeing yourself as the hero of your story? Maybe you've had heroes in the past, people that you want to dedicate your story to, saying, because of this person, my life is here. But never forget that you are that person for someone else, or you have the opportunity to show up as that. Are you using your thoughts and actions to transform your life and the lives of others? What words are you saying out there? Are you telling people that they're enough? Are you taking away from who they are? What are your words like? What are your actions like? Are you expressing love? Are you expressing judgment? Be very conscious of those things. Because if you're the only teacher in someone's life and you say, well, if everyone acted exactly as I just did, what would things be like? And it's hard to process these things as you're going through them. And that's why it's very beneficial to think about life so that as you go out there and the next random unexpected event happens, that you're prepared. The worst time to, I work in the death industry, um, and the worst time to process death is when you're in the middle of it. 
the hardest time to process how to overcome challenges is when you're in the midst of them. Because you may look at someone who's going through a hard time and say, that's nothing. Let me tell you how easy it is. And they're like, are you kidding me? You, you just need to go away. That's not the best time to learn how to process things. In your story, as a parent, we hope to be able to protect our children as they go out into the world and they're facing their own challenges. And so learning the lessons, sharing the lessons, and that is where you will transform the world. And as you ride into town, are you riding in on a, on a horse, prepared for war, prepared for something negative to happen, or are you riding on a mule, anticipating spreading love and peace with everyone? And the palm leaves, remember that is representative of victory. What victories have you had? You woke up this morning. That may not be that significant to you, but I promise you, you don't have to look very far to find someone who was not that benefit or that uh, fortunate this morning. It may be you have shoes to put on your feet. If you are involved at all with the world dynamic, we realize that there's a lot of people who don't even have shoes to wear. You are able to wake up and have a glass of water. Take inventory of your day. Where were you blessed? And if you're having a bad day, I'd encourage you every day you start your day, take inventory of the tools that you're going out into your adventure with. Never feel that you're completely empty because you're here. You're learning. You're growing. You have gifts to share. And these are some of the tools in your backpack as you go out there and you face the unexpected. And fortunately, bring some extra so you can give those to someone else who might not have what it is. And that could be the perspective. It could be that little shift that they need. Are you arriving in a place of peace or war, and how do you want to show up? That's the next question, is how do you want to show up? Do you want to show up as someone who's going to take away from an environment, or do you want to add to an environment? Every one of you matter. Every one of your stories is as perfect as it is. And I hope that you go out today and you start seeking out, well, what was perfect in my story? What have I gleaned from this journey so far? And it doesn't matter if you're 80, because I, I meet a lot of people who are 80, and they're like, well, I'm just retired right now. Well, you're still here for a reason, so I challenge you to continue that journey. It doesn't matter if you're 40, 30, 20. At every stage of the game, you're on a journey. The little baby, wherever the baby went to, adorable, is about to embark upon a lot of adventures. You know, grandma and grandpa are here. They're picking up new tools, reinforcing old tools, because I know nothing new or different from any of you all. I'm blessed with the opportunity to walk beside you all on a Sunday morning sometimes, and so I'm very grateful for you all being here. So your story is a journey of a hero, and I appreciate you all and thank you all for showing up to this journey. moment, allow yourselves to relax in your chairs. Focus your attention on the feeling of the circulation in your body. Feel the blood flowing through your hands. Feel it in your feet. And allow yourselves to sink deeply into this meditation. As you reflect on your life, remind yourself that this is my path, and here I shall find peace. Repeat that silently to yourself as we move into the silence.
slowly bring your awareness back to this moment. And as you go about your day, remember to always say to yourself, this is my path. Here I shall find peace. Welcome to that special sacred time in the service where we share our tithes and offerings. And always remember that as we enter this part of the service, that the law of circulation is something worth studying and understanding, even whenever it comes to receiving a gift. That when gifts come, to be open to receive them, because it's part of the flow process. And so I invite you now to take your love offerings in your hands and join with me in the offering blessing. If you'd say with me, divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And so it is. I'd like to take this opportunity as well to invite you to come sing in the Unity Temple Chancel Choir. We are small but mighty, and we need more. If you sing at all or just like singing or like standing next to people who sing, come join us. It's super fun. We do music that's accessible, some new, some old, and uh, we have a great time, and it's a time of fellowship and uh, community that's always beneficial to everyone who comes. So if you have any inkling, please come. We would love to have you. Thank you. Thursday nights, 7 to 8.30, 9.30 call for Sunday morning service. We bless these gifts and these givers and know that these gifts go forward to bless this temple and all those whose lives we touch.
joyful, joyful Lord, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above, melt the clouds of sin. Thank you again for joining us today for this hour of inspiration. Join us again next week. And as I mentioned earlier, there is coffee and snacks downstairs and usually great conversation. So please join us down there after the service. We now conclude the service with the prayer for protection and the peace song. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is 